Hey, what's up guys? I'm here with my Silverado and for today's video I wanted to go over five reasons why not to buy the exact lift kit that I have on my Silverado right here. Now my Silverado is a 2013 and it's equipped with the Rough Country three and a half inch lift kit. I also have a one and a half inch body lift, but specifically I'm going to be talking about the Rough Country lift kit. So the first reason not to buy the Rough Country three and a half inch lift kit is because it's basically just a leveling kit. All the kit comes with is a bunch of spacers for the diff and the strut. It also comes with some aftermarket shocks, but that's only for the rear. So even if you do upgrade the kit and go with the aftermarket struts, for the front and you also get the aftermarket control arms that's still not going to give you spacers accounting for the other suspension components in the front end. Now I've been running this kit for about 20,000 miles on my Silverado. I've taken it on trails, I've taken it off-road, I've gotten it stuck badly in the snow and places off-road. probably had this lift kit on for about 20, 25,000 miles on my Silverado. I've been on gravel roads, back roads, dirt roads, I've been off-road, I've been off-road in the snow, it's seen tons of road salt. It's been through it all. I have not treated this kit very easily, so I figure that's my credibility for this video. For the second reason not to buy the Rough Country 3.5 inch lift kit is because it's basically just a leveling kit. And when you get a leveling kit for a Silverado safely with just spacers, which basically this kit is, you don't want to go any higher than 2.5 inch. Now, even 2.5 is really pushing it. Just getting a 2.5 inch spacer for your truck is already going to put premature wear and tear on your part. But I'm saying if you go all the way up to three and a half inches of you're gonna be dealing with repairs and parts breaking faster than you think, especially you guys that are gonna be off-roading every day or live in an area that you actually need a good set of tires and a lift kit to be able to just leave your house every day. Third reason why you shouldn't buy a Rough Country three and a half inch lift kit for your Silverado, and that is the suspension angles. The suspension angles on the Silverado are horrible. If I could just show you here, real quick but down here if you look the angles are very very curved and diagonal they should be more straight than this as you can see the boot for the lower control arm is at an angle that is never good everything should be as flat as possible and then you can see the upper control arm boot is also at a bad angle so we got the tie rod it's at a bad angle as well everything should be as straight as possible the suspension of these trucks stock are very straight they should not be at an angle like this here's just another shot of the bad suspension angles on the truck now the parts are pretty stained from the off-roading that i have done but here you can also have another angle of what my suspension angles look like okay so for the next reason on why you shouldn't buy so the next reason why you shouldn't buy this lift for your truck is the ride quality whenever i got the lift first put on the ride quality did change a lot. It did get a lot stiffer because as you can see, everything's at an angle. So there's not that much room and play for the suspension to really move. It puts the truck at harshest angle you can really go. If you go any higher than this, you'll probably start breaking parts just driving it down the road for the first time. Now, when you're on smooth roads, it's okay. Like it's very, it's very dealable. I mean, I drive trucks, okay? And I'm okay with how it might be a little bumpy sometimes. I'm not expecting it to ride very smooth. But even for me, I'll be going over bumps and stuff like that. It'll You'll feel like I'm on a bike without front shock. It will really give you an impact and you'll really feel it. You'll feel bad for your truck as well that you hit that and it'll make you always swerve for everything but that also puts you at a potential risk of getting pulled over even if you're just swerving just so you don't damage or ruin any part of your truck you're going to be facing a lot of that shock to yourself and your body and the inside of the cab you're also going to consider should i be doing this with this lift kit ride quality is just going to suck but for the next reason on why you shouldn't buy this lift kit for your truck the three and a half inch rough country lift like i said is the bad shocks that they give you now a lot of people on forums especially they all say that the rough country shocks don't last very long they suck the quality isn't good and especially the people that will just put the lift on and they'll say the shocks are worse than the factory and these are the shocks that came with the kit i painted them black so they are not looking like the gray ones that are in the picture and they did have a sticker on them as well, but I painted over everything and then I put these red shock boots on. So it may look like I have a different aftermarket shock setup, but that is not the case. People just complain that the shocks are horrible quality and for a lift kit, you wanna have good shocks, especially if you're gonna be going off road. You don't want to take the impact. Now, originally Rough Country did release a three inch kit and that kit was so bad that they actually had to remake it and then they stopped offering it and then they made it into the three and a half inch lift kit that I have on my truck. So the next reason on why you shouldn't buy this lift kit for your truck is corrosion the front spacer that they had in the front i noticed was already starting to peel and chip away so i had to sand it down in the places that were looking pretty bad and then i painted over it as you can see in the front suspension components there 
it's a little bit dark, but maybe you can see it. But I also had to paint the shocks in the back because they were already peeled. So that's when I had to paint over them, put the shock boots on. I just wanted to make sure that they lasted as long as I possibly could get out of them before I upgraded to a full new suspension left. So along with corrosion and something else bad with just the factory components of the truck really, is that you have to cut the bump stops if you just buy the kit without the aftermarket control arms. Now you might be saying, well you could have just got the aftermarket control arms, you could have got the new strut. Well for people that are looking for a lift kit, don't know too much about it, they're going for price and stuff like that, you can buy this kit offered without those components, which I think shouldn't be available to the public. Because people that don't know too much about these trucks might try to opt for without it and say, well you know, I, my stock components are fine, why don't I just use those? Well that's a bad idea, part could fail, could break, and potentially leave you stuck for a long time. And that could be quite dangerous depending on the location you go to. Because I know there's a lot of you guys out there that go to places that are pretty remote, you're not too sure of where you're at, might not have phone service, and you don't know about the legitimacy of the place you're at. So you wanna be able to off-road there and not have to worry about parts failing while you're way out there because it also might be a location that you couldn't get a tow truck out to and like I said, if you have no phone service, you won't be able to contact anybody. So the last and probably the most important Thing you need to know about why you shouldn't buy this lift kit and this is the biggest thing to me especially when i first got it is that this kit does not level your truck the front fender in the front is lower than it is in the back and that is horrible because these lift kits they advertise well they're like well it levels out your truck it makes it lift high that's what we all want we want our trucks to be higher off the ground but we also want them to be level at least most of us this cut does not level your truck at all and it keeps it having a factory rake in the front which there's really nothing else you can do. I can't just buy another spacer and put it in the front and raise a little more. This is completely maxed out as you can get. If you go any more, you're just gonna break some parts immediately. I wouldn't necessarily say that I still have the factory rake amount, but I'd say about an inch, maybe an inch and a half is that the front is sitting lower. It's also sitting in an uneven spot right now on the side of the road here, but it's still something that I wish I had on the truck. I wish it was leveled. I like the look of that. My friend's truck, my friend with the 2500 HD, he's got the leveling kit on his truck. He's also was able to run 35s because he also has the bigger frame on his truck. I eventually do want to start towing a boat and stuff like that around to the lake. So if I'm going to do that, I just get the rear airbags in the back. So that about does it for this video. I hope I convinced you guys not to get this kit. Now, if I were to buy a Rough Country kit again, I would go with the five inch or six inch lift because the five inch keeps you at factory level. And the six inch is if you had just a one inch spacer instead of a three and a half inch spacer on your truck. So definitely go for one of those two kits if you're dead solid on rough country. Now, you know, I think I made this video before something similar about the lift kit on my truck, but I was kind of all over the place. I was going back and forth on my opinions and thoughts, but now I have a lot more experience, a lot more miles on this lift kit. So I wanted just to remake this video and be more clear about my points and I was also able to give you solid reasons on why this lift kit isn't good for your truck and is not a good purchase to make. So definitely save your money, go with the bigger lift kit, it's definitely going to be the better idea. You're going to have better performance, you're going to have better ride quality. So it's all these different things that in the end it's going to be worth more because you'll probably end up replacing parts with buying a kit like this. So definitely save your money and go with the better one. And it's crazy because I actually went on Rough Country site, I just wanted to check up on some information on the kit, see if they remodeled it or anything. And I also noticed they raised their price on their lift kits. So so I guess a lot of you guys are buying their lift kits, so I figured I would inform you for some of you guys that are attempting to make a decision on their site. So I'm not bashing on Rough Country at all. I'm not saying that they make bad lifts. I'm just saying some are better than others. They're giving you the option for a cheap lift. I've always been a firm believer in the saying, you get what you pay for. So I'm just trying to inform you guys on the better option to go with. I'm not saying don't go with Rough Country at all. They're definitely a good brand. So with that being said, I'm definitely gonna be going with some suspension upgrades here soon on the Silverado. Videos will be coming out, so make Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe so I can see you next video. Have a nice day, guys. Now that is a nice picture.